not easy. <laughs> One of my jobs is to thank you all for coming and supporting the Tinley Park Fishing and Outdoor Show. It's your 22nd year, as some of you may or may not know. Thank you for coming and supporting it. Um, Thanks for having it. Yeah. I have to go through the short list of sponsors who have been with this show quite a long time to make it possible. I want to thank Plano Molding, Benton Hauser Automotive, Mercury Marine, Cabela's, Lorenz Electronics, which has to be the company I work for, Crable. These are all proud sponsors of the Tinley Park Fishing Show. Without further ado, I know you guys are all here to see the catfish guy. Matt, the Catman Jones, is going to do a seminar on monster flatheads made easy. Here he comes. All right. All right. I, I know I distinctly told you this morning not to call me the Catman. <laughs> River Rat. It's Captain Matt. I said, get there you go. River Rat. It's Captain Matt, but I knew it here would get him going if I called him Catman. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just one of those guys. It's all right. <laughs> I'm over already. Tomorrow I'll get it. Maybe. Only thing I feel bad right now is this, this guy right here in the stocking hat because he's having a heck of a time staying awake. <laughs> I got him here about 20 minutes ago and, and I've been watching him riding off on him all the whole, the whole time. He's struggling. How y'all doing? All right, good. Good. How you doing? Good. How many of you are here because you're really interested in catfishing and how many of you are here because, well, you've been walking around all day and you felt like sitting down? About 50 50. Well, that's good. Hopefully, I can keep you interested. He said, I'm Matt Jones. They call me Cat Matt on the internet. I run a guide service on the Rock River. I know a lot of, you know, a lot of the fishing based up here in Chicago is walleye fishing, crappie fishing, uh, with salmon trout, a lot, of, a lot of things go on up here with the, the Great Lakes and stuff, right? So, I know you have uh, good cat fishing up here, the Fox River. Uh, Illinois River, I know a lot of you have been battling in the Illinois River with the Asian carp and whatnot. I know that's, that's changed things, at least the way people feel about going out and spending a relaxing day on the river when they're getting bombarded, but it happens. Uh, I think before I get too much into, how you doing? Before I get too much into the seminar itself, uh, first off, I don't want it to be boring to you, especially for this guy, because if we're going to do it, you know, uh, but, uh, so ask questions, you know, whenever you want to, because, you know, it's about if you're here to pick something up, hopefully I can, and pick this old guy over here, he might not, he might know more than I do, so we, we don't know yet, but uh, be pretty slick. I was talking to him earlier, so um, I think the biggest thing for what you all need to realize is, is you living here in Chicago, you have some of the best catfish on the planet. Really, you do within an hour and a half, two hours a year, which is nothing. I mean, you go cruising around on a Friday night, go out to the bar, go whatever, do what you want, go to supper, and you've just spent all the money it'd take you to fill up your tank, your boat, whatever, and go to the Rock River or the Mississippi River and have an opportunity to catch a tremendous catfish. And that's not counting if you throw in your, your local power plant lakes like LaSalle and some of these other places. I, I like LaSalle when I want to go catch some blue cats or just do something different. I love going over to LaSalle and go for some baits, but uh, when I talk catfishing, uh, the people that know me, when I say catfish, they know I mean flatheads. Uh, flatheads are the hardest of the channel, uh, the channel heads. They're the hardest of the catfish to catch. Uh, they're very, they do things on their own time. They're almost like a, a stubborn little kid. You know, you're going to tell them what to do, but that don't always work for you. They're going to do things when they want to, how they want to. But just like any fish, and again, don't feel don't feel like you can't ask a question whenever you want to. I'm going to sit this, this rod down. I'll show you some of that later. What are the some of the things like, if you're talking walleye, crappie, bass, anything, what are some of the most important, important things you're taking into consideration when you're getting ready to go fishing? Depth. 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 That's a good one. Temperature. Temperature. Water 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 temperature. Permission from the wife. <laughs> you have to get permission to go fishing. Sometimes. Sometimes? No, I'm a kid. She's Are you married? You're married? 
Yeah. Okay, well, at least you're taking the kids. That's good. Yeah. This has got to be about the kids. Yeah. It's a negotiator. Bait. Thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. I have never been known to be quiet, so I didn't know if I needed to put on a little Madonna headset or not. Um, some, some people get themselves in trouble, okay? And, and I know I, I'm not qualified to stand up here and try to teach somebody how to catch a muskie or how to catch a walleye or, or whatnot. And everybody fishes for certain things based on you know, what they've been growing up doing or what they've read about fish or what they like. I think walleye are beautiful fish. I think they're great eating, blah, blah, blah. But that just doesn't do it for me. It's the same with muskie. I know a lot of guys fish for muskie. They say, oh, yeah, big, bad muskie. Well, I <coughs> flathead makes a muskie look like a wuss. <laughs> I mean, you catch a 20-pound muskie all day. You go catch a 20-pound flathead. You come back and tell me. They're tired. Right. <laughs> a flathead's head down all the time, fight, never gives up. That's the kind of fish you want to wrestle with, especially knowing that not everybody's doing it. This isn't going down south and sitting in front of a dam and catching 50 blue cats in a day. And I mean, granted, they're beautiful fish, big, strong fish, all that stuff. But you know, that's over as soon as those fish come to the top. It doesn't really last all that long. Flatheads, I mean, it's like they sit down there all day long and they just they're just making they're just waiting for somebody to catch them. It's just so they can show them how bad they are. You know, catching flathead is it's 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 awesome. And when you've got to put in all that time and all that effort and everything's got to be right, you're taking all this stuff into consideration. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I love the Rock River. All right. I love the Rock River. Okay. In fact, my brother is the one who caught it two years ago, that giant cat that he's laying up on alongside shore with. Four foot cat, four and a half. Four foot cat. Yeah. Well, that's a nice one. That's 48 inches. He must be a musky guy. What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? All right, well, let's take some of this into consideration. First thing we know is we can't catch fish that aren't there, right? If you're a white-tailed deer hunter and you're looking, to, you're looking to shoot a trophy deer, you're not going to kill one where there is none, right? Right, right? I mean, that's common sense. You don't have to be at any different level of you just have to have a little common sense, okay? So first of all, you know, you gotta know where to look, right? Uh, no, okay, let's go without the spelling stuff. Let's just forget that, I ain't gonna write that. I forgot the H, two W's, anyway. You gotta know where to look, okay? First of all, you do your little, you do your little, uh, your, your uh, research and you say, okay, I don't want to go fish a lake that has no flatheads in it. Because I don't care what kind of bait, what kind of, what kind you do if there's none there. We all agree, if there's none there, you won't catch any, right? Okay, so we got that. But location means a lot of things. So, uh, location, structure, depth. Basically, you can almost tie all three of them in together when you think about it when it comes down to it. Because location. Sorry, I was just closing the door. Oh, there's more. <laughs> great. How you guys doing? Thanks for coming. Did you come to take a break or are you here because you like catfishing? You like catfishing. That's what I'm talking about. Where are you going? <laughs> I need a pass. I don't even stop talking to these guys. All right. No, no. If you had to guess, I'm not. Take me out of the equation. Say, okay, we don't like Catman. I don't like its prices. Forget the hundreds of fish that they catch down there that are 30, 40, 50 pounds. I'm going to go do it on my own. Okay? What's the first thing you're going to look for? Without having any knowledge, maybe in particular of a flathead, what's the first thing you're going to look for? It's cover. Okay. It's always been said with catfishing that current, depth, and cover are your three big factors. Current, depth, and cover. Okay. So, 
first thing I would look for, since it's the first thing that I can see with my naked eye, is just the current. Because I can see what the water's doing looking at the top of it. I can tell if it's moving fast, it's slow, if there's an eddy. I can tell if there's a boil. You know, a boil's going to tell me that there's a hump, that there's a drop, that there's a piece of cover, something that's changing the flow of the water. So it's nice when people put these words together like that, but what I'm looking for, if I'm just finding a new piece of water to look for a flathead, I'm looking for change. Change. I see a change in the flow of the current. You look at the bank, the bank goes straight, and then there's a little push on the bank, and then it comes back in. And the current's flowing down along the bank, it's flowing straight, and then it's kicking out, and it's rolling back in. That little knob sticking off the bank, is it flowing out underneath the water? Deflecting water this way, current rolling over, do I got a hole behind it? Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to look for to help me, this drive me nuts. <laughs> first thing I'm going to look for to help me, if I'm looking for a flathead for the first time, what you got? Change. Give you some change. change. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think I won't take that. You put that in my hand. Hell, I'll go over there. That guy's got that chocolate stand. Give me some malt balls or something. <laughs> He's got all kinds of chocolate. You see that? He got blue chocolate. I never saw blue chocolate. I was amazed. Anyway. So first thing I'm looking for is change. Right? Because that gets you in the, in the game. Something's there. It's a drop off. It's a ride. It's something's there. Okay? So first off, change. Go with change. Number one. And I think, when I think about it, and I'm not trying to revolutionize the world or redesign the wheel or whatever. Are you flipping one dollar bills at me? Yes. Okay. Well, get closer because I can't grab it from here. Uh, so anyway, when I see this, on any given body of water, the change that I'm looking for, change in flow, next thing I can do is, is I can go check that out. Okay. Now, a lot of guys over the last few years have gotten really confused because electronics are just a mess. You got to work for NASA to figure out most of the most of the depth finders out there. I feel like, and I'll go with the what's a kid say IMO in my opinion or whatever LOL OMG. I feel like I can catch a flathead with anybody. I'm taking people's money to put them on flathead. So if I ain't confident, do you want to book me to put you on a flathead? And say, well, I think maybe we'll catch one. I don't know. That guy's kind of better than I am. I, I think I can put you on a flathead anywhere I go. Put using the stuff that I'm telling you today. Okay. I have never, ever. I have a $250 color hummingbird in my G3. Okay, I don't even use it. I use my $99 Garmin because it shows me best the three things that I need to see for my boat to find flatheads. It tells me the water temperature, it tells me the depth, and it shows me the structure. If you're looking for all this other stuff, this, this, all this side imaging stuff is great. If you're fishing big reservoirs and great big expanses and stuff to the south, you know, it, companies are pushing that stuff to the big blue cat fishermen in the south because there's huge schools of fish everywhere and they, you know, it looks cool on TV and it sells units. Okay, you can get by with a $90 depth finder just as easy as you can get by with a hundred, except you ain't gonna have near the headaches. Okay, you need to see, you need to see, and you need to know the water temperature the depth, and the structure. So you got, you found your change, then you get around that change and you start looking around, you already, you'll, it'll have your water temperature already. Then you can see the depth and you can see the structure. Okay? So here we are, you're on the water, you already know the temperature and you have found something new. You have found something different in the water. Then you get on it, you check your depth and structure. Okay, now flatheads typically are not known as shallow water fish. 
That doesn't mean you can't catch them there, especially spawning periods. Flatheads love 